Hey there, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. In today's sesh, we'll be chatting about the first appearance of Wolverine. Hey there again, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. Today, we'll be talking about one of my favorite characters. He's definitely in my top three, and this is uh, Weapon X, aka Wolverine, aka Logan. So, his first appearance was in Hulk 180 and 181, um, coming out in November of 1974 by Len Wein and um, Herb Trimpey. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is that this has been a very big book uh, for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people who are collectors right now tend to collect Hulk 181. So I went to read Hulk 181 on um, Marvel Unlimited but then I came to realize that I didn't have the full story with just reading 181. I know that's his full first appearance, but I ended up reading Hulk 180 in order to get an idea of what happened um, before his first full appearance. So essentially, the Wolverine actually made um, a cameo appearance in a, like a whole panel at the end of Hulk 180. So I think I want what I want to do today is go over the story of 180 followed by 181 uh, just to give a holistic view of, of Wolverine and why he came in and how he came in. So this was a really good story um, of the Hulk. So the main characters in this Hulk 180 issue are the Hulk, Wendigo, uh, Marie Cartier, um, Paul Cartier, and Paul Cartier is essentially uh, Wendigo, and um, I believe Georges, Georges Baptiste. So how this story starts is you see the Hulk um, in upstate New York, and somehow just to get some peace and quiet and away from the, the big city, I guess, away from people, he ends up going up north to the Quebec area. So as he's going through the forest, like he kind of creates destruction. He jumps over people's fences, destroys their fences, runs into a pack of wolves, and then fights them. So he's just trying to like get away from everyone and everything, but he keeps running into people. And it's, it's kind of sad because um, he's just trying to find some peace and quiet, essentially. So after he crosses that border, there's actually an, um, an Air Force base that is up north in Quebec. And they're trying to figure out, like, it's actually a base that's built to, to detect if, like, creatures cross the border, like the Hulk. So they're like, okay, this is, this is time that we, uh, we may need to deploy Weapon X, essentially. Right? So it cuts back to the Hulk. And one of the, one of the things uh, that happens to the Hulk is he starts hearing this voice in his head of, like, Hulk, come here. Hulk, come here. And then so he's like... He gets angrier and angrier. He starts hearing the voice louder and louder in his head, so he keeps following the voice. So he ends up going and finding this. They call it a hovel. So I, I believe this is just like kind of a cave. And inside this cave are Marie Cartier and um, Georges Baptiste. So Marie Cartier, she's wearing this um, this garb, essentially, and like kind of this like headgear that has like these horns on it, like kind of like Loki. So I have to look back at... Um, what what um you know kind of gods that they followed but i think she's she kind of dabbled in the dark arts so it seems like um she has some mystical powers here so what you see here is a conversation between her and uh, george's baptiste so behind them you see like these two stone beds and this is kind of all uh, the the stone beds of like if you remember the apocalypse from the x-men series or or the movie like when Apocalypse transfers his bodies, he has like these two um, kind of stone beds. So I automatically thought this and this was exactly it, right? So Marie Cartier, her brother is actually Paul Cartier, who is Wendigo. You end up finding out that Wendigo became Wendigo because their gods had cursed him um, from his human form to this monstrous um, Wendigo form because... In a time of need, he actually ate human flesh. Um, they were they were out on a hunting trip. So Georges and Paul were out on a hunting trip. They're both friends, and um, you see that you know they got stuck in a, in a separate cave, and then 
for un some unforeseen reason, they were stuck there. And uh, Paul ended up eating human flesh in order to survive. Because of that, the, the gods made him one to go. And now his sister is trying to switch his body out with someone else so she could get her brother back, essentially. Her, her grand scheme is that I'm going to pull Hulk into this whole thing since he's a brute and essentially just switch bodies between Wendigo into this brute so she could get her, her brother back. So her whole plan is to lure Hulk in and then, you know, switch bodies. So the first thing she does is she calls on Hulk. Hulk comes to the hovel and apparently like... Marie Cartier and the Hulk have met before and they are considered friends, right? So she basically offers him food and he's like, oh, here's my friend. Okay, sh she's offering me food. She must be good. But she also kind of um, gives him the soup or like the soup that has the smoke that makes him want to go to sleep. So Hulk is like, oh, I'm sleepy now. Um, um, where, can I, where can I rest? So essentially she has him lay on one of the, one of the um, stone beds and now... Part one is done, get the Hulk. Part two is get Wendigo. So she kind of pulls this magic potion and um, you kind of see Wendigo kind of walk towards them. This whole time, Georges is saying, Marie, why are you doing this? You can't, you can't curse this brute into being the next Wendigo. This is not fair for him. So she's like, well, I don't know what Paul would want, but... Like, Paul's here, and I need to do this. So she was, like, really set on doing this. So as Wendigo walks into the hovel, because of the, the sleeping potion wasn't strong enough, and I guess the Hulk is has much more stamina than uh, what they expected, he wakes up from that sleeping spell. As he wakes up, he goes to the front of the hovel to try to find more food from Marie and Georges. But at the same time, he sees Wendigo in the front, and he's like, why is Wendigo here? He must be here to hurt my friends. So before Marie could say, hey, Wendigo's here and he's a friend also, the Hulk starts fighting him. So they, they start fighting outside. You kind of see the Hulk like um, lift a huge chunk of the forest, throw it at um, throw it at Wendigo, and then kind of just like do sidekicks. It's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, they do a, a, some headbutts and stuff like that. But... Um, Throughout this entire fighting scene, it's like a couple pages long, you all of a sudden see this huge panel of the Wolverine coming. And he's basically saying, if you want to really tangle with someone, why not try your luck against the Wolverine? So that's that's the first part of, the, of this whole story, right? So this is um, Hulk 180. Where Hulk 181 continues is essentially that that iconic first cover where you see the Wolverine come in with his with his claws. They call them diamond, diamond sharp, diamond hard claws. And then he's starting to get in between the Wendigo Hulk fight. So you, you essentially see that he's like really fast, but really small compared to these guys. But he has so much um, stamina and agility that he's just like really pestering the Hulk, right? But he came to realize, hey, the I can't really beat the Hulk right now. Let me just switch up and then fight Wendigo. So all of a sudden, Hulk is confused. Like, why is this little puny man now trying to fight Wendigo, who is also my enemy? I guess uh, Wolverine is also my friend. So essentially, the Wolverine kind of realizes this, and then he holds Wendigo, and he's like, Hulk, help attack him while I'm distracting him. And then the Hulk is like, okay, let me do it. So he starts attacking Wendigo and then like he he punches Wendigo he throws him against a tree and then like he's like Wolverine get out of the way I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna destroy this guy so he just throws him against the tree and then um he's basically almost passed out and then Wolverine's like let me finish this for you and so he jumps on Wendigo and then he starts uh, slashing with his um I guess berserker barrage essentially so it's kind of nuts because at this point you realize and you hear that Wendigo is actually immortal. So he's essentially just um, unconscious. So he's passed out right now. You see Wolverine and the Hulk standing next to each other, kind of giving each other the side eye. Like what's going to happen next? There's this awkward silence because they attacked each other first, then their friends. Are they attacking again or are they friends again? So before you know it, Wolverine just starts attacking the Hulk again. And he's like, 
The Hulk is so pissed because he's like, I thought we were friends. You're just like all those other puny humans. They're always betraying me. I can't trust anybody. So you start really, really feeling sorry for the uh, for the Hulk. Outside of this, you see Georges Baptiste and uh, Marie Cartier in the background saying, all right, they've done half the job. Um, Wendigo's passed out. Let's drag him back to the hovel. This whole time, George is like, is this really what Paul wanted? Like, we shouldn't do this. So she's like, it doesn't matter. We need to do this. So you kind of cut back to the, the, um, the base in Quebec. And then the, the army folks there are essentially saying, hey, we've deployed Weapon X. Do we need to deploy more people? We haven't heard back from them. And then one of their general commanders is essentially like, we gave him six hours. Let's give him his six hours. If we need to send more people, we'll send more people, right? So we've spent a lot of time, money to take this, this, uh, this mutant's um, powers and then kind of make him a perfect weapon. The only thing right now is like his psychological, like, like wildness essentially. So they're like, I think we've think we've done a good enough job. Let's let's give him some more time. So you cut back to the scene where you see again Hulk trying to, to throw huge rocks at the Wolverine, but the Wolverine punches um, the Hulk and then the Hulk just drops a rock on himself. So at the same time, you see Marie Cartier on top of the hill behind them kind of pouring this potion in and kind of wafting all of this, this kind of, I guess, sleeping gas again down into um, the valley where uh, Wolverine and the Hulk are, are fighting. So all of a sudden, they both pass out. They're both asleep, right? So at this point, um, Marie is like, hey, Georges, let's drag this, this Hulk green guy back into the hovel so we could start this spell and switch the bodies. So they start pulling him, but they start, as they start pulling him, he switches back uh, the Hulk to, to Banner. And um, what I notice here is like it's Dr. Robert Bruce Banner. So I definitely need to look more at um, why they only call him Bruce Banner now, but I know there's there's a difference between that. But essentially, as they're bringing him back, George is like, we can't do this to a normal man. I thought this was guy it was just a brute, but we, we definitely can't do this. So he just walks away into the forest, and he's like, Maria, I cannot help you. Um, so he's it's kind of sad because he's sitting in the forest, and he's like, I've been haunted my whole life because of, you know, my, my good friend becoming Wendigo. Now I can't put this curse upon anyone else. But, uh, you know, Marie just keeps pressuring him. So he's like, all right, I got to do something. So he walks into the hovel. But he before he walks into the hovel, he kind of takes a, a quick glance at the sunset behind him. And you see his hunched back, and then he's walking into the hovel. So at the same time, Marie is tying up Wolverine. Tying up, um, tying up um, the Hulk, and the Hulk wakes up, and then all of a sudden, again, his stamina is really like really good, so like these potions don't work too well on him. So he takes and lifts up the Wolverine, who's all chained up, throws him down against the floor because he thinks that's gonna like destroy him, but it just breaks the chains. So Wolverine is like breaks out of the chains, and then he's like, "Thanks for that," and then he starts attacking the Hulk again. So at the same time, you see Marie running away back to the hovel. And then at the front of the hovel, you see um, Wendigo again, trying, like, he's awake and he's up. And then she's like, what are you trying to tell me? And then um, Wendigo's trying to, like, tell her something, but he can't use his words. So he just points back into the room behind them. So what happens is as Marie goes to the back room, you kind of see that she sees her brother Paul in his human form on one of the on one of the the stone uh, beds so she's like she looks back at wendigo and she's like george's i know that's you why did you do this like you didn't you did not owe our family this much to change yourself into wendigo and then you can kind of see in his head it's a thought bubble essentially he's like you don't understand marie perhaps you never will but i didn't do this because i owed you a debt I did this because I loved you. So, and he, he covers his eyes. So you kind of see the tear, one tear kind of coming down his eye. It's, it's, it's pretty sad. So they say before he loses the rest of his mind, because like, you know, he's becoming a brute himself. He smashes the wall and he runs out 
and then he just leaves. And then so you see Marie kind of in this really sad state. She got her brother back, but at the cost of one of her friends, one of a friend that she knew was a good person also um, that she was pressuring. So at the same time, you kind of cut out and you see Wolverine and, um, and the Hulk fighting still. The Hulk essentially and the Wolverine hear like this scream from, from Marie. They pause, but as they pause, um, the Hulk this time takes advantage and punches the Wolverine. And he kind of pulls back, um, but not enough that, um, you know, he's, he doesn't die or anything, but he essentially gets knocked out. So he's laying on the ground. And then um, what happens is the Hulk goes into the hovel to figure out what happened to Marie. And then so she's, she kind of descends into madness again because she doesn't know what happened, what to do. She sees her brother, but she's all, all sad. She's all, all these mixed emotions are happening. And then so you all of a sudden see this huge green arm kind of come over the shoulder of Marie. So you kind of see that the Hulk is trying to console her. And then you kind of you kind of see all of these little nuances of, of, of the Hulk here. So that's the end of the story, essentially. The, the, the fighting of the Hulk and Wolverine are, are, are a big part of the story. But you kind of see that the major part of the story is the story of Wendigo, Marie, George's, Paul, and um, it's 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 kind of nuts. So it's a cool story. I I kind of see how how Stan and the whole group kind of take currently good characters and add and kind of introduce new characters into their storylines and then see if they work out or not. This is a really cool story. Both 180 and 181 are really cool. I, I definitely would want to have this in my collection sometime in the future. It's definitely a, a hard book to get right now because it, it's so hot. But um, I definitely am glad that I've read this. And I would definitely recommend for, for you all to read this. And hopefully this gives you a little bit of a, of a snippet of, of the first appearance of, of Wolverine. It may not all be about Wolverine, but you kind of see like all these little... Um, ideas about him right so he's weapon x they actually say that he's 5'5 five five. i know there's a lot of um a lot of different debates about how big is wolverine and whatnot and then his diamond his diamond heart adamantium claws um so they're kind of pulling in a little bit of all of these different strings to wolverine's character and and you kind of see like the basis of the wolverine that we have today the costume looks very much similar to uh, what it is today, the the classic yellow and black, um, how like his his agility, his stamina, his powers, um, they don't really go over like healing ability quite yet. But this is actually a really really cool issue, and I would definitely recommend to read it. So hopefully I could bring some big stories to you guys again. Before I close this out, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on that bell icon so you know when I drop new videos. From my comic journey to yours. Keep making it your own. Thanks all. Bye.